Welcome everyone and thank you for joining today's webinar. It's our final webinar prior to uh, National Voter Registration Day, which is happening on September 20th. Uh, today's webinar is titled Five Days to Go and Five Ways to Get Ready to Celebrate. We have amazing speakers from Pizza to the Polls, Fair Election Center's Campus Vote Project, Asian Community Development Council, and Cleveland Votes, and I can't wait to hand it over to them. Before we get started, I'm going to cover some quick housekeeping items. First, this webinar is being recorded. You will receive an email with the recording and slides next week. Second, there will be a live question and answer session at the end of the presentations. Please use the Q&A box to ask our panelists your questions. Lastly, you can share any comments or audio or visual, visual issues that you are experiencing with us via the chat that's being monitored by our staff. Thank you. Now, let's begin. Next slide, Sugalima. So I'd like to start by giving a quick thank you to our sponsors that make National Voter Registration Day happen. They enable us to provide grants to partners, ship thousands of posters and stickers for free, and build resources and host webinars like this one and more. So they're really behind making National Voter Registration Day happen. Next slide. I hope you all know by now, but I wanna just give the quick spiel. Uh, non National Voter Registration Day is a nonpartisan civic holiday to get Americans registered and hashtag vote ready started in 2012. It's held on a Tuesday of September every year with the next one on September 20th, 2022. I can't believe it's so close. And it's a coordinated day of events to share registration opportunities before state deadlines. Next slide. Why celebrate? As many of you know, as many as one in four eligible Americans are not registered to vote or are unsure if they're registered to vote. Millions of Americans miss elections each year due to registration problems or missing deadlines. And we believe community partners like you have the unique and trusted relationships in your community and can help change this by talking to the people who may need more information before they're prepared to register to vote. Next slide. Most importantly, we have really big goals for 2022. We're hoping to register over 800,000 people this year and for a lifetime total of 5.5 million registered voters. We're super excited about this number and so excited to have partners like you to help us hit it. We hope to engage over 4,000 community partners. We have around 4,100 community partners signed up now, which we're super excited about. We also wanna make sure that we're helping voters get hashtag vote ready for the midterms this year, which are coming up soon. And we're excited to celebrate our 10 year anniversary. National Voter Registration Day first started in 2012. And so this year it's kind of like a birthday party and we're excited that you're all a part of it. Next slide. So without further ado, we want to turn it over to our awesome speakers. We're going to brush up on third party voter registration laws, talk about partnering with other organizations in your community and engaging voters, find ways to make your event unique, amping up your event with food and getting plugged in on communications. Next slide. With that, I would like to introduce Mike Burns, my former supervisor actually, and the national director at Fair Election Center's Campus Vote Project. Mike um, is the National Director for Fair Election Center's Campus Vote Project. He spent over five years working in electoral politics prior to law school, including two years as the Executive Director of the Fairfax County Democratic Committee. During law school, Mike was enrolled in CUA's Law and Public Policy Certificate Program and was awarded a Doolin Haynes Fellowship upon completion. Mike has worked with various kinds of institutions of higher education from across the country to help them understand the effects of different election administration systems have on their campus community and how they can help their students register and vote. He has a JD from the Catholic University of America and a BS in political science with a minor in history from Longwood University. He's a member of the Virginia Bar. Mike, welcome. Thanks for presenting with us today. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, so excited to be here. Always so happy for the civic holiday season to get underway. Um, I love voter registration day. Um, what a great start to the fall. Um, so yeah, as Debbie mentioned, I'm with the Fair Election Center and I direct our campus vote project um, within the Fair Election Center. You know, we're a nonpartisan nonprofit voting rights advocacy group 
um, and help produce if you guys want to go to the next slide. Um, third party voter registration drive guides, um, which you can also find on the NVRD website. Um, and I guess so what I'm going to do today is like if you don't listen to anything else I say for the next couple of minutes and the next I only have like four slides, but if you, this is the only thing you hear me say today is that you should make sure that you look up and know the rules for your jurisdiction. As with everything elections related, you know what I'm going to talk about next are some general tips and some ideas and some things to be thinking about. Um, but really make sure that you know the specific rules for the specific place where you're doing voter registration so that you can one make sure that you and your volunteers um, are staying on the right side of the regulations but also making sure that any voters that you are attempting to sit, assist actually successfully are able to make it onto the rolls and that they have a good experience and they're able to show up later um, this year and actually have their voices heard at the polls um, so definitely check this out um, debbie dropped the link in there there are guides for all of the states except for north dakota I have a bullet point about this later. They don't have voter registration. And that's, I don't know, that's all the time we have to talk about North Dakota today. Um, so if you wanna go to the next slide. So a couple of just kind of important top line tips to maybe thinking about before your voter registration event, um, especially for next week is just sort of like one, like do not pay anyone based on the number of forms that they collect. If you have money, if you have folks who are being paid to be part of this that aren't just volunteers, um, this is illegal in a lot of places. It is prohibited um, in a number of jurisdictions and it's just bad practice. So we just generally advise people not to do that anywhere. Um, if you have people who are getting paid as part of your voter registration activities, make sure that you're doing it on like an hourly basis or something like that. Um, we just don't wanna incentivize people, um, you know, unfortunately having an incentive to, to overproduce forms that might not have accurate information on them. Um, another really important thing to think about is just also like making sure like what voter registration form will you use. Um, so depending on the type of event you're going to have and where you're going to be located, um, you know, most states have their state forms, you might even be able to get forms from your local jurisdiction that have um, information that might be even more local than the state level about where to return it to or specific information on it. Um, but for some partners who might be on here, if you're near the state line, if you're on a college campus, if you're doing a very large scale event that might be drawing people from across state lines or other jurisdictions, there is a federal form that you could use if you think you're going to run into some of those folks um, that has instructions for all of the states and then has a standardized form that you can put that information onto and says where to send those forms. Um, so just think about kind of what form you need based on where your event's going to be. Do you want to use the federal form and be prepared for that? Or even maybe just have forms from two different states if you're in a if you are located right on the state line and you want to be able to assist people from from multiple states um, then needing the form that matches the jurisdiction where the voters you're trying to assist might be from is important to think about. And then the follow up to that is where will you get your registration forms from? So like the federal form is posted on the EAC.gov website and you can print off copies of that and they have it in multiple languages. Um, but if you want to get forms potentially from your state um, election officials or your local election officials, they generally will give forms out. Um, but again, they might have like an approval process or a request process that might take an amount of time. They might have a limit on the number of forms that you can get at any given time. Um, and in some states, there are prohibitions again about producing the forms yourself. Um, so in some places you might be able to just get the digital form or take a blank form and reproduce it yourself at your own cost if that's what you need to do to get the volume you need. But in other places you might have to go through official channels to get your forms. Um, so just try and think ahead knowing that you know NPRD is next week if you haven't thought about where you're getting your forms yet and if you don't have your forms in hand, today would be a really good day to look into this question and make sure that you know where you're getting all your forms from. Um, and then the last one, this is a little outside the norm, but if it is the case where you are, then I wanna make sure that you are thinking about this. Like does your state have like a training or a registration or a notice requirement where you either have to be trained by um, state or local officials or at least register with them or potentially even just provide them notice of upcoming drives. Um, this is, like I said, outside the norm, but there are some states like Texas that are probably the very far end of this where you have to be like a deputy, a volunteer deputy registrar and you have to be trained in the county where you are assisting a voter to be able to have both assist someone in registration and be able to handle forms and return them. Um, so that's like the extreme end of it. And that's not a lot of places, but there's some other places that have requirements like that, like Florida, Virginia, a few states have that. So if you are in a state that has that, you really want to make sure you're aware of that and you're in compliance with that. Again, so one, you guys don't get in any trouble, but two, all the voters you're assisting 
um, are actually able to have their forms accepted and successfully make it onto the rolls. Um, so I think, I don't know if you want me to wait and take these later, but I think, yeah, the federal form for college campuses, again, think about this, the population that it serves. If they have a lot of out-of-state students, then having the federal form on hand could be really helpful, um, but also know that those students have a choice. And if they want to register at that institution, um, then they can register at their local address using the local form. Um, but if they want to register back at a home address, and that's what they consider to be their permanent residence, they've probably got that choice too, depending on their individual situation. Um, so I would, you know, but also if it's, you know, if it's a community college and everyone's a local commuter, then you probably don't need the federal form. But if you're at an institution where you maybe have a lot of out-of-state students, it's probably a good idea to maybe at least just have a few on hand. Um, and then I see someone asked, do you need to offer paper forms or just offer online registration? Um, again, I think that's up to you and what your event and drive can handle. I think having paper forms is always helpful. You know, I think again, a best practice is if you are in a place where you are allowed to assist voters and you are allowed to transmit the forms on their behalf and actually making sure they complete it right while they're there in front of you and you submit it on their behalf is the most likely way that they're going to be successful in completing it. Um, but you could also have paper forms on hand to give away to folks who might not have time to stop and complete the registration process at that time who want it. And at least that way, you know, they have it with them. Um, but also being able to facilitate it if you're in a state, not all states have good online voter registration systems or online voter registration systems that aren't tied to their DMV database and not everyone has a driver's license. Um, so again, like just being prepared to serve the population you think you're most likely to encounter, I think is the important thing to think about for your event um, and make sure that you can really assist as many people as possible. Okay. Um, so a couple things just to remember while you're doing your drive. Again, this is all general, just some tips and practices from folks who've been doing this for a while that we've kind of collected up. Again, make sure you know the rules in your specific state. Um, but I would say um, one of the things that catches a lot of people a lot of times is check boxes on forms. Most state forms and especially the federal form have what we call like the attestation saying like, I'm old enough to register to vote, I am a citizen. Um, people need to check those boxes. If those boxes aren't checked, lots of times that is one of the things that will prevent a form from being processed. It is not a piece of information that can be missing and the form can still be processed. So always try and double check and make sure when you're assisting a voter that they've checked all the necessary check boxes that they need to. Another really common mistake we see, especially when folks are out filling out forms, especially if you're doing paper registrations out while folks are out and about, is to make sure that folks have completed the date of birth section and that they have a date next to their signature and that they did not flip these dates and accidentally put today's date in the date of birth section or their date of birth down where they should put the, the signature date, making sure that both dates are on there, again, are generally like crucial pieces of information that will prevent a form from being processed. And sometimes having them flipped um, happens more than you would think when folks are out and about filling these things out. And then obviously the last very big one is if you're doing paper registration forms, make sure that people sign the form. <laughs> it's again, like one of those key pieces of things that if folks haven't signed the form after they've done all that other information and they're looking it over and they forget to do that, um, then the form will not be accepted. So just a couple of kind of key things to make sure you're kind of checking, like you always wanna be trying to check everything and make sure that voters have filled out all the necessary information, but these are a couple of the big things that um, we see catch people up a lot um, when they're out doing paper registration drives. Um, and then just a couple of quick tips, uh, almost done here, and then uh, handing it over to some of our other great presenters. So just wanted to remind folks to submit all applications that you've collected to the by the appropriate deadline in the jurisdiction you're in. Um, some states have very quick turnaround times of things like 48 hours or within five days. Um, so again, make sure that if you're going to be collecting forms on behalf of the voters, that those forms are getting to the right election officials within the amount of time that you're supposed to do that. So that one, again, you don't get in trouble, but two, we're making sure that those voters actually get on the rolls. Um, and again, just regardless of what that turnaround time is in almost every, basically in every jurisdiction, the rule is submit the forms by the voter registration deadline. So even if the standard rule is you have five days to turn in a form, if it's only two days before the voter registration deadline, you have to get those forms in by the voter registration deadline. So especially for some of our states that have earlier dates, um, this shouldn't be a problem for anywhere with NVRD. Um, but in a number of places, you know, we have a lot of voter registration deadlines that will happen like October 11th, 29 days out from the election. Um, so like always make sure that whatever the deadline is in your jurisdiction that you're getting your forms resubmitted by then. Um, 
And again, just a quick reminder too, is if you're collecting information to contact voters after they've registered, you wanna follow up with them later on, just as a matter of best practice, like do not copy a voter's social security number or their driver's license number. Um, in some states, you can't collect any information off the form or you can only collect specific information. So as always, make sure you know what it is in your state, but just as a matter of best practice, regardless of what the rules are around collecting voters' information, we just always recommend to not collect the social security number driver's license information from any form. Um, if you are allowed to collect form off of there to contact voters afterwards and make sure they're able to turn out and vote. And then just one last quick plug I wanted to make for folks, especially since we do a lot of stuff with young people um, and I, some of the other groups might too, is also just again, trying to think about the population you might encounter. If you think you're gonna be at a place where you might be doing work with high school students or in a place where you might run into younger folks, um, you know, there are a lot of states now, we're up to 19 states plus DC that allow for voters to pre-register either at the age of 16 or 17. And then almost all states have rules that generally allow someone to register if they'll be 18 by the next election. So that second bucket of folks, they can usually just fill out a regular form and submit it. Um, but for some of these other folks to do pre-registration, there might be some different things they need to check on the state form. Uh, the language on the federal form is really confusing around this um, and makes it kind of hard for folks to navigate. So if you're in a place, if you're in a state that has pre-registration and you think that your drive might run into younger voters, uh, please just look into that. Make sure that you've kind of thought through ahead of time what those voters need to do to complete their form successfully and that you have a plan for submitting that. Um, and I think that's basically, I wanna wrap up there. I know we have a lot of great presenters today. So just wanted to kind of run through some top line reminders for folks ahead of next week. Thank you, Mike. That was incredibly helpful. And as you notice, we got some questions in the chat and in the Q&A, if you wanna follow up with folks there and we'll answer some of them live later as well. Um, I would, Excited to introduce our next presenter, Erica Anthony. Uh, Erica is a native New Yorker, is the co-founder and executive director of Cleveland Votes. Cleveland Votes is a nonpartisan democracy building movement that works to reconstruct and strengthen power through active participation of, our, of their collective partners. Guided by a system of networks, they promote informed, action-oriented mobilization that shifts power toward equitable civic engagement and infrastructure. Prior to her full-time role with Cleveland Votes, Erica most recently served as the executive director of the Ohio Transformation Fund. Additionally, Erica was the vice president of government relations and strategy for Cleveland Neighborhood Progress, director of business development at Oriana House Incorporated, project coordinator for a pilot reentry program at the Centers for Families and Children, and held various roles in the legal sector. Erica holds a BS in psychology from the Pennsylvania State University and a master's of public administration from the Maxine G. Levin College of Urban Affairs at Cleveland State University. Erica, we're super excited to have you today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Debbie. Uh, so great to be with you all this afternoon. And thank you to Mike for your presentation. Uh, I took a couple of notes myself, always in a state of learning. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, so Cleveland Votes, next slide, please. Uh, we understand the power of partnerships and we'll get into that today. I will skip this slide uh, since Debbie just shared information about our mission. Um, and then just to elevate our vision, um, our collective work will power a transformation towards a more liberated future. Uh, we actually just uh, completed our four year strategic plan, uh, which is refining our vision. Uh, we seek to offer access to tools that produce increased efforts to civic education, engagement, and advocacy. We will work with intentionality to amplify the voices of our neighbors, ensuring that we have a more informed, participatory, and cohesive community. Next slide, please. All right, so just a couple of pictures highlighting uh, the ways in which Cleveland Votes works in partnership. Um, at the bottom in the center, you see uh, someone, a cyclist, uh, pulling up to a table at a previous National Voter Registration Day. Uh, before we hopped on today, we talked about the need to, you know, continue to innovate, um, particularly in 2020, and, and we are still very much living in COVID, um, and we've been really grateful to our partners uh, to really figure out different ways that they can still engage members of our community um, in, a safe, uh, in a safe and healthy way. Next slide. 
All right. So uh, I am joined as a co-founder with Crystal Bryant. Her and I co-founded the organization um, in 2014. Um, before we even co-founded the organization, her and I began celebrating National Voter Registration Day. So we are also celebrating this birthday of 10 years uh, for this civic holiday. Um, and since 2014, we have engaged hundreds of partners in the greater Cleveland area. Uh, we have engaged primarily nonprofit organizations, but I would say over the years, um, our partnerships have really expanded to smaller community-based groups. Individuals have um, engaged and volunteered. We've had large corporations um, as well as small businesses, which is great. Um, at the top right, you see a picture of um, in our Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, which is where our basketball team and other sports teams play. Um, they have been a partner since 2020 um, and they actually had some like very specific branded um, swag as you can see here, Cleveland turns up to vote. Um, on the bottom left hand corner, uh, we have a local community development corporation uh, that held an event um, you know, on a very high traffic uh, street here in the city um, to engage and capture folks uh, through National Voter Registration Day. Next slide. So we have the really unique um, opportunity here in Cleveland uh, where we work really closely with our county board of elections. Uh, we've been doing this nearly 10 years together um, and in partnership, and I'll talk more about what that partnership has looked like, but essentially really thinking about how you bridge uh, the relationship between government and a nonprofit organization and a network of nonprofits that are engaging. Um, it really allows us to expand our reach. Uh, we are Cleveland-centric, city of Cleveland-centric, um, and of course our county, our, our board of elections extends uh, beyond the city of Cleveland to our entering suburbs and other parts of the county. Um, so through this partnership, we're able to reach many more people um, and engage uh, different types of groups. So for instance, in the top left, we see uh, a volunteer volunteer at a local library. Um, our local library here, both our Cleveland Public Library as well as our Cuyahoga County uh, Library branches have been actively involved. Um, on the bottom left, we have uh, one of our hospitals. So we have three major hospitals in the, in the Cleveland area, Metro Health. Um, last year was the first year uh, that they had multiple sites uh, for their hospital location activating for National Voter Registration Day. Next slide, please. So here in Cuyahoga County, as I mentioned, or Greater Cleveland, uh, we do this in partnership with our Board of Elections. So leading up to September 20th, we actually hold three planning meetings. Uh, those meetings start in early August. Um, some of the topics that we cover include just giving folks an overview of what National Voter Registration Day is. We began to develop our shared goals. So every year we have a goal of how many partners uh, we want involved, how many events we want to host, um, how many voter registrations and vote by mails. We want to vote by mail applications we would like to collect. And we do that together. Um, we look at the historical data. So we collect the data each year. Um, and then usually we go big, go home. We usually set a really high goal uh, for that current year. We also begin to brainstorm ideas. Um, we have a wide array of nonprofits and organizations that have engaged with us. And sometimes we have what we call our OGs, folks who have been rocking with us for a number of years, but often, uh, and particularly this year, we have a lot of new partners, folks that have not celebrated this civic holiday. So it's a great time just to talk about and, and begin to brainstorm different innovative ways uh, that they may wanna activate. Um, we give some basic tips similar to what Mike was sharing with us. You know, how do you host a successful event? You know, what are the, the core things that you need to make sure that you, your staff, and your volunteers know to ensure that you are communicating effectively and, and fact-based information to the folks that you engage? We talk about nonpartisanship. Um, and again, you know, effective completion of the voter registration and the vote by mail forms. Um, we issue an, an NVRD interest form to partners, um, and they essentially have three options they can choose from. They can host an organize, they can host an event for National Voter Registration Day. They can partner, um, so if they themselves don't necessarily have staff or volunteer capacity. They can be partnered up with another organization, or if they uh, cannot host or partner with an organization, uh, they commit to promoting uh, National voter registration day through social media channels and other communication channels. Um, and all that culminates in us uh, celebrating for actually an entire week. So here in Greater Cleveland, uh, NVRD will kick off on Saturday the 17th and then we'll go through September 23rd. Um, and then I'll just note a few of the pictures here. So the bottom right, I mentioned that our 
uh, local sports teams. We actually have a three teams alliance here in the Cleveland area. So our Guardians, which is our baseball team, Cavs basketball, and the Browns um, football formed a three team alliance in 2020 to activate around not just voting and civic education, but also things like education um, and, and social justice. Um, so at this event, um, I think this was a picture from 2021, if I'm not mistaken, um, at the at the Rock and Mortgage Field House, they had a DJ. And as you can see, I'm over there getting my groove on. And then the woman to the right uh, is our friend Elia from the Board of Elections. Next slide. Um, so as uh, this partnership evolves, um, it's important for us that we, of course, are elevating all the events that are happening in our area. Um, so in addition to, of course, National Voter Registration Days, communication to their website and social media, we also create a global flyer. Um, so this was just finished up. I actually inserted it <laughs> to uh, the slide deck um, yesterday. Um, so all the events that are occurring from the 17th to the 23rd are listed here um, on the flyer. Um, thank you. We have an amazing graphic designer who helped us actually to redesign our flyer. It was looking a little dated, so I'm really excited for this new design. Um, we also issue a press release, which went out on Tuesday the 13th, um, to start to get local media excited about National Voter Registration Day. We actually have been really successful in getting media out to events across the city, and by giving them this really easy hand guide, you know, sort of guide to where the events are happening, we try to make it as easy as possible. Um, something new for us this year, we actually added all the events also to our website. Um, and then through both our social media, as well as the Board of Elections social media, uh, social uh, media accounts, uh, we also elevate all the events. Um, and then we create a local Facebook event. So again, of course, the National has their information. Uh, so this is just showing you what events are happening in the greater Cleveland area. Um, we also, this year, this will be the first time uh, we're engaging content creators. Um, so we have a graphic design association that uh, approached us a couple of weeks ago and asked how they could contribute, how they could help. Um, they have graphic designers, they have storytellers, they have folks that can do visual representation. So they will essentially go to our events next week or starting Saturday through next week, and they will document. Um, and it'll be a great way that we can just continue to elevate um, the great work that our partners are doing in the community. Next slide. Um, so just a couple of tips of things that we have learned over the years. Um, it's really important that you identify, identify the audience that you seek to engage and really understand what is the best method to engage them. Um, obviously, you know, we have a, a wide array of social service nonprofits, brick and mortar nonprofits, community-based organizations, individuals that are just jazzed up to activate. So understanding who you are seeking to engage and understanding, you know, the time of day, you know, the day of the week, you know, in this case, it's Tuesday, but, you know, so even throughout Tuesday, is there an, a more opportune time that may work best for engaging the audience? You want to leverage your existing assets and networks. Um, work smarter, not harder, right? So if you have a captive audience, which Crystal, our co-founder, often elevates for us, leverage that. So if you have an existing meeting or a community meeting, you don't have to create an event. You can make that event your national voter registration excuse me, National Voter Registration Day event, and also think about how you can embed messages in your existing communication tools. Um, if your jurisdiction has a local issue or campaign that's gonna be on your ballot, you may be able to partner with them for National Voter Registration Day. Um, take advantage of the fact that, you know, we have many more events that are happening in the digital and the virtual space, which we know was not as prevalent before 2020. Um, Mike hit on this, you know, encouraging people to make a plan. Um, don't assume that we, uh, or don't assume that the folks that you're engaging know what that means um, here in Ohio. And I know it's different in every state, but we have three options. You can vote early, you can uh, vote absentee or vote by mail, or you can vote you know, on election day at your precinct um, and making sure that people understand that they do have options. Um, and most importantly, um, our phrase that we often use is elevate that there is joint democracy. Um, we know that there are a lot of challenging things that we are contending with in our country and our states, um, but there are amazing folks like yourself who are here today that are really seeking to reimagine what a more equitable democracy can be. So we want to, we want to elevate that. We want to celebrate that. Um, and we have many more strategies if folks are interested in our Commit to Cleveland toolkit, which honestly, while it says Cleveland, we think many of the strategies are applicable to other jurisdictions. 
I'll just highlight a few of the things that are in the slides here. So on the top left-hand corner, uh, we had a really innovative partnership uh, with Young Latino Network. Um, this, this particular picture wasn't on NVRD, but I think it speaks to the spirit of people being innovative. Um, so we had our um, primary election canceled in March of 2020, like I'm sure many other states did. And they uh, essentially were doing this caravana where they were driving around to neighborhoods where they knew that lower um, turnout was lower and essentially dropping off voter registration cards to the individuals in that neighborhood and then looping back around to pick up their voter registration card and then volunteering to bring them down to the board of election as well as for vote by mail applications here in Ohio um, you have to print out your vote by mail application and if you're like me I just got a printer in my home for the first time probably in over 10 years so in 2020 we knew that was going to be a barrier for a lot of people that they did not have a printer at home and our election was going to be vote by mail only due to the pandemic. Um, in the bottom center, um, this is not a new tactic, but I think a lot of people have elevated it even more the last couple of years thinking about QR codes, right? So we had sanitizer and we printed out stickers. Uh, so we were being safe and healthy um, in providing folks sanitizer. And then also the, the QR code that year linked people to access their voter registration um, or how they could do their voter registration online. Next slide, please. And that is it. So thank you all so much. Um, hopefully I stayed within my time. Um, if you are interested in seeing uh, the events listed, I know the slide deck and information will be shared after today. If you're interested in receiving our newsletter, the information is there. And if you want to scan uh, your phone right now, you can see the events on our website. Thank you so much, Erica. We're always so inspired by what Cleveland Votes is doing on National Voter Registration Day. And then just in general, Cleveland Votes is amazing work. So thank you for joining us today. Awesome. And with that, I want to introduce Amy Koo, who will be talking to us a little bit about the Asian Community Development Council. Uh, Amy's passion for increasing access to democracy and engaging with Asian American voters has led her to her current position as the political director for One APIA Nevada. When she's not working, she also enjoys soaking up sun and traveling around the world. She holds a dual degree in Chinese and political science from the University of California, Santa Barbara. Amy, we're so excited to have you to talk about making your event unique and just some of the cool, amazing stuff that you all have done on the ground. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Debbie. Thank you so much for having me. And hello, everyone. Um, I'm Amy Ku. I am the Assistant Director of Outreach with the Asian Community Development Council. And I also work with our partner organization, One API in Nevada. So sorry about the uh, missed intro. Next slide. <laughs> Um, so the Asian Community Development Council, we are a local nonprofit organization based in Nevada. We are a statewide organization and we've been doing voter registration since 2016. We actually started our entire civic engagement program through voter registration. And since 2016, we have registered 36,000 people to register to vote in Nevada. Um, we work directly with the Asian and Pacific Islanders and Native Hawaiian community here in Nevada, and we meet the community where there are, which I think is a big part of our program. Uh, we work with a lot of different community partners, and we make sure that we have a lot of fun themes during our voter registration events and also during National Voter Registration Day, and we always plan very fun culturally relevant events. In the past, we've done Animal Crossing events during National Voter Registration Day in 2020, and also Pokemon Go to the Polls. I'm really excited to show, uh, share with everyone what we are planning to do for this year. Next slide. So this year, we're gonna be celebrating uh, National Voter Registration Day again, and we are gonna be celebrating our democracy uh, through a movie screening at one of the local parks in Las Vegas. So a big part of our National Voter Registration Day uh, themes are always Asian and culturally relevant. So we're gonna be showing everything everywhere all at once, which if you all haven't watched the movie yet, I would highly recommend you all go watch uh, everything everywhere all at once. Um, but also for us, it's a, bar, a big part about talking to the community about why it's important to go register to vote, especially with the Asian American community. We saw historic turnout in 2020, and it's really hard to know what's going to replicate that turnout. I think a lot of times when we talk about what encourages people to register to vote or take that additional step to make sure that they are registered to vote before the election, it's talking to people about the issues that they care about, but also building community. And so a big part of what we try to make sure that people feel when they're here at our events is that they are part of our community and they are part of the work that we do. 
We also do um, register people to vote during this event. We also recruit volunteers to just reach out to the community. We have a lot of volunteers who speak multiple languages and we reach out to folks in language as well. We always have in language voter guides and make sure that we are sharing information to our community at the level that they need, whether that means uh, making sure that there is language access as every step of the process or also just sharing information about that, um, the process about how to register to vote and how to return your mail ballot. Next slide. And we always work with partners in the state. These are just a couple of the partners, including National Voter Registration Day that we work with to make sure that our events are successful. Uh, we work with Native Vote. We're also gonna be working with uh, Native Vote Alliance here in Nevada. And this is important because we always want to make sure that we are also centering our community organizations and connecting our community with these different organizations that also do great work in Nevada. Next slide. And a big part of what we try to center at National Voter Registration Day is to make sure that we are always talking about why voting is crucial in our communities. This is important because oftentimes for a lot of Asian American voters in specific, uh, they don't get a lot of outreach before the election to talk to them about why it's important for them to register to vote or to vote. Um, when you hear about like elections, a lot of times the Asian American vote is not talked about just because uh, in a lot of different states, the Asian American community isn't big enough for news networks to really engage with people who are doing the work with the community. And that's why a big part of what we do is making sure that we have fun events, because that also means that we are engaging with more people than just people who might be interested in registering to vote, but also because uh, someone who might just be interested in uh, watching a movie or um, attending one of our events is going to come to a fun event and come to an event that is centered in the culture versus just a you know event that um, is trying to get people to register to vote or feels very transactional. Our best uh, events are always because we are centering the community and we're making sure that the community is having fun during these events. We always want to make sure that we are building energy for National Voter Registration Day, but also you know just educating our community is a big part of the work that we do. Um, just talking to people about why it's important to register. Oftentimes we're opening those first conversations with our community members. And that's a big part of why we do the work that we do. Uh, next slide. So uh, like I mentioned in the past, we've always done fun events and fun things for people to engage with during the event. This year, we're going to be having a local DJ, DJ Miss Joy, um, who is going to be helping us with the music and the entertainment. And we are also partnering with local AAPI businesses. Uh, on the screen here, you see hot dogs from one of our um, local AAPI businesses called Crunchies in Nevada. We're also gonna be having shaved ice and matcha there at the event. And so making sure that we're also highlighting local AAPI businesses, especially small business owners here in Nevada, is a big part of the work we do. We always try to support these local businesses through all the events that we do and also highlight um, their businesses to the local community and making sure that we always provide food for everyone who is going to be attending these events. And then on the very uh, side of the slide, you'll see that Eric Jang, who is our director of outreach is attending one of our uh, infamous goat events. We always love to bring petting zoos with baby goats and llamas. Um, it's always something that's always therapeutic for everyone, especially nowadays, it's such a busy time and everyone is running around doing a whole bunch of different events. So just having these different things that are exciting and people are excited to look forward to is something that we are always um, trying to plan for. And we've been told from many people that uh, the GOAT event is one of their favorite events and they're always looking forward to it every year. Uh, so it is something that we do annually just to encourage people to come out and just to even hang out with the goats for a couple of minutes, even if they are registered to vote. And I think that's why we've been so successful with all of the events that we've had is because we always make sure that we're thinking about what we would want to see if we were there at the event and making sure that we are always highlighting the community every step of the way. And I just wanted to highlight again that we are showing everything everywhere all at once. Next slide, sorry. Um, for this year. So we're going to be doing not only voter registration at the event, but we also do voter registration specifically with youth. So we will be doing a full day of voter registration uh, with a high school in the morning and then also uh, finishing off the day with the showing of everything everywhere all at once. 
and I'm more than happy to talk about any like you know previous events that we have done or if anyone has any questions about uh, what we have done to make sure that these events are successful I'm more than happy to answer any questions and share thank you so much for having me and I really appreciate it Thank you so much, Amy. Um, always inspired and always love how much you think about exactly what your community wants and needs and how to best reach them. We love that. Um, next up, I want to introduce Lee Cornfield from Pizza to the Poles. Lee is the chief pizza officer at Pizza to the Poles, which he joined after working for eight plus years in management consulting at Bain and Company. He loves that his job enables him to encourage nonpartisan civic engagement and support local businesses while working from home in Durham, North Carolina. He has personally ordered more than 40,000 pizzas, none of which include pineapple. We have things to say about that at National Voter Registration Day. In his free time, he enjoys playing rugby and scuba diving around the world with his fiance, Katie. Uh, thank you so much, Lee. Thank you, Debbie. Appreciate it. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you very well. Perfect. Um, I'm going to just spend a, a few minutes today because we're, we're already starting to run short on time, giving you a quick overview of Pizza to the Polls and then talking about what we're doing on National Voter Registration Day. If we can flip to the first slide. There's a ton of information on here. Um, this is quick background on us. We're a 501c3 nonpartisan non nonprofit. We were founded in 2016 by tech founders who wanted to send pizzas to people standing in long lines at polling locations. That's our on-demand program. Uh, we still run that. In 2020, with our partner Slice, we sent over a million dollars of pizzas from local pizzerias, uh, and we're continuing to do that this year. Our food truck program was founded in 2020. Um, that was mostly because of the pandemic. We weren't sure if we would be able to send pizzas. Uh, and so we ended up having a, a large food truck program in 2020. We had uh, 78 trucks across 29 cities and 289 rolling days. And then in 2021, we founded the Vaccine Snacks program to send pizzas to people standing along lines at vaccination sites. If we can go to the next slide, um, we, we still expect there to be lines this year, uh, mostly during early voting and on election day, and we will continue to serve pizzas to people standing along lines. Given that there weren't as many long lines during the primary season, we also sent pizzas to other nonpartisan nonprofit partners that were doing either voter education, voter registration, or voter turnout. You can see some of our partners here. We have many more. Um, a good example of how we did this is the one in the middle, Black Girls Vote, ran a, a high school voter registration challenge among 10 Baltimore high schools, and we threw a pizza party for the organization, or sorry, for the high school that registered the most students. Um, we're continuing to do this, and, and you'll see this on National Voter Registration Day as well. Um, and, and so this is a way that we, we partner with people beyond just sending pizzas to people standing in long lines. Let's go to the next slide. So on National Voter Registration Day, we're partnering with Levi's and other nonpartisan nonprofits on the ground to run a community college registration program. Uh, community college students make up about two in every five students in the country. And while college student voting rates increased substantially from 2016 to 2020, community college students still lag behind. Levi's, among others, identified this as a gap. And so we're working with them to try to register as many community college students as possible this coming Tuesday. What you see on the right side is our primary partners on the ground. We're going to be sending two food trucks, one to Austin Community College and one to Miami-Dade College, Kendall Campus, working directly with Engage Miami and Move Texas to do that. And the trucks will look something like uh, what you see on the right side there, which is really fun. And then if we can go to the last slide, my map got a little stretched out, but it, you get the idea. We're sending pizzas all over the country to community colleges. So it's gonna end up being 30 plus co community college campuses across 13 states. You can see the list of community colleges here on the right side. And we have to give a quick shout out to All In and Campus Vote Project for helping us identify and ultimately get pizzas to all of these campuses that are doing events to register students. That's a quick overview of what we're doing for National Voter Registration Day. We're going to continue to be engaged through the rest of this year with a big focus on the other civic holidays as well as Election Day. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the Q&A. Thank you so much, Lee. Um, 
we recognize that food is a big <laughs> motivator, actually just a great way to like create some community while people are registering to vote and learning things and are so thankful for the work Pizza to the Polls is doing on National Voter Registration Day this year. Um, next, I would like to introduce National Voter Registration Day's very own communication specialist, Travis Morin. Originally from Connecticut, Travis traveled to New Hampshire in 2009 for college and hasn't left since. He jumped into the world of civic engagement as a press and media specialist with Next Gen America and later AARP during the 2016 election cycle. Travis has also worked as a print journalist for the New Hampshire, New Hampshire Union Leader, the state's largest daily paper, during which he covered everything from local town meetings to 2020 presidential primary happenings. Since 2020, he has been the communication specialist for National Voter Registration Day. Travis, thanks for joining us. And I'm excited to hear how people can make sure that they're plugged into social media and communications on the day of. Well, I'm excited to talk about it, Debbie. Thank you. Um, hey there all. Yes, as Deb mentioned, I am the communication specialist for the holiday. I do a lot of writing and graphic design and social media and all sorts of stuff that's written. Uh, I usually have my hands on that. I'm gonna talk a bit today about how uh, you uh, partners can make use of our social media assets and kind of make the, that part of the, of the day for you a little bit easier. Uh, so let's get started. Next slide. So uh, we'll go over our key messages this year. We have two. The first one is kind of the, the big one. That it's our 10 year birthday, it's our 10 year anniversary. Um, you know, it's our 10 trip around the sun. We want to color that with, uh, use that to color as much of what we do this year as possible. Um, it's kind of got two flavors. On one hand, it's an anniversary. It, it, it's marking a pivotal kind of honored work that our partners have done to get America vote ready and grow democracy. And it's a kind of star spangled, awesome birthday bash that all of America is invited to. You know, you can look at it one of two ways. Uh, either way, it's about celebrating democracy. Uh, and we choose to emphasize celebrating. Um, you know, in 10 years in, we're still holding fast to the things that made us get into this in the first place way back in 2012. It's going out and meeting voters where they are and closing the gaps in our, our democracy um, by, by getting people registered to vote who may not be part of the process. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, key message two this year is we're calling it life happens to so check your registration. Um, you know, the theory of the case here is that, you know, 2020 was this big banner year for getting folks involved and registering to vote and voting for the first time. Uh, and then we had a whole year where, yes, there were state and local elections, but folks don't always get involved in those. Um, so a lot can happen in two years. You know, if people, uh, people get married and change their names, people move, whether it's across, you know, across town or over state lines. We know for a fact that there were over 57 million uh, permanent moves that took place during the pandemic. We heard all about people kind of leaving cities and going out to the country. Um, and that kind of makes that more complicated as people who had like a temporary move. You know, I know a lot of people who are my age who maybe live in a city and when the pandemic hit, they went to go stay with their parents and are sort of still there and have a foot in between both places. So where do you vote? What's domicile law? What's, uh, what, what's uh, you know, your, your residency? All that can get complicated. So we're looking to use our voices to kind of make all that information as easily available as possible. Um, you know, greater need than ever to kind of place equal emphasis on not just are you registered to vote, but are you sure your registration is active? Because one can be an easy yes or no. One is a bit more of a conversation and allows us to kind of get the details of people. Uh, tools like na uh, the National Association of Secretaries of States Can I Vote tool are really useful for that. I actually had a friend randomly reached out to me a few weeks ago uh, asking me all about how do I know if I'm registered and I pointed them to that tool and they said it was very easy so it, it works from a realistic practical level. Um, next slide please. Uh, and also underpinning all of this is just the notion of nonpartisanship. you know because we can't uh, erase or negate the idea that the things are partisan right now the reality that things are very partisan right now we're sort of going to lean into it. We're going to say you know yes things are partisan out there but that just makes it all the more important to plant the flag in the ground, that democracy, that voting, that voter registration is something that truly belongs to us all. And we're gonna shout it from the rooftops as long as it takes. Um, you know, by emphasizing the kind of manner by which uh, the need to register to vote and engage in civic life bridges that partisan gap. Um, and we're gonna lean on our, our kind of bipartisan leadership to make that happen. Uh, specifically, uh, our steering committee is chaired by two secretaries of state, one Republican, Mike Adams from Kentucky, uh, and one Democrat, Steve Simon from Minnesota, uh, and together, they're going to help us make sure that everybody knows that this is one thing that we can all take part in. Uh, next slide, please. So some social media essentials for the day of. Uh, our primary hashtags are National Voter Registration Day and Vote Ready. 
Um, those both, those, we'll, we'll be monitoring both of them. Uh, if you can use them both in the same post or the same tweet, that's great, but we know that's a lot of characters. Um, so don't feel pressured to if it's gonna sacrifice the quality of your content. Um, but vote ready at a minimum uh, would be great. Uh, and that just helps us be better able to find you and find your stuff and promote it and make sure more people are seeing it. Uh, also be sure to tag us at Natal Voter Reg Day. Uh, that's just been condensed for the sake of character abbreviation on social media. That way we'll be sure to see it and uh, we'll you know like it and share it and make sure people know it's something to follow and pay attention to. Uh, also images and video are the best ways to get noticed on social media. Uh, so if you're taking, if you're taking you know, pictures of your event on the ground the day of, if you're taking, you know, Snapchats or Reels uh, or, or, or TikToks, even if you have folks who kind of specialize in those younger person technologies, um, you know, certainly make use of it. That's going to make sure people are, the algorithm kind of favors that. Um, now, that's not to say text isn't also helpful. Um, some of our best tweets are like one sentence and nothing else. Um, sometimes brevity is really preferred when it comes to that. So, uh, there's no hard science to it. Just kind of feel it out. But general rules, video and images and like text, and you're doing text, keep it short. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, a little bit more. So this is all numbers and you'll get this stuff in um, kind of in the email. But like the algorithm of these social media websites tends to like well-sized images. Uh, they all have images that they think works a bit better with their platform on mobile. Uh, so Twitter, it's 16 by 900. Uh, Facebook is 940 by 788, Instagram it's 1080 by 1080, or for a landscape it's it's 1080 by 1350. Again, that's a lot of numbers I'm just throwing at you, and I'm not a numbers person, so don't worry about it. But you will get these in the email we send out, so not to worry. Um, best times to post vary, uh, but generally speaking, earlier is better. Between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. tend to be the strongest, but you know, on the day of, it's going to be going all day. Uh, we're going to be watching all day, so don't feel like you have to limit yourself to anything. Um, and engage with others. If someone comments on your stuff, comment back. Uh, if you see things that interest you that are within the ballpark of what you folks are doing or organization that's related to you, comment, like it. That just lets the kind of social media mechanisms know, hey, you're a real account. We should favor you because people like authentic content. Um, next slide, please. Uh, also, just some resources we have. We want to make sure you guys are aware of. So. Uh, the overarching one, our communication strategy guide, it's kind of a larger, lengthier version of me talking about the key the key points earlier. Um, so it's gonna give you great explainers for the holiday, what it's about, lots of kind of text and dialogue to make use of if you're working on messaging or talking to the press or what have you. So it's worth getting into, it's very thick. Uh, it's, not, it's thicker than my, you might wanna read, um, but there's a lot of good information in there. And we also break out most of the resources on our communications resources page. So I don't feel like you need to read the whole thing front to back. Uh, also, we have a social media toolkit that includes over 200 ready-made graphics for you to use and post on the holiday. It ranges from the statistical reminder graphics to inspirational stuff to just the patently silly. Um, there's a flavor for pretty much everything. Uh, we want to make sure you please use it. Uh, you know, it's going to make life easier for you. You don't have to spend time thinking about what you're going to post or designing graphics. We've got a lot there for you. And it just helps us... Um, you know, our plan is to flood the zone on the day of and make sure the internet is paved with uh, social media content related to voting. And we're gonna help make sure we uplift it all. Uh, and also on an addendum to that, uh, there's the sample text for social media. It's also in that toolkit. It's a bunch of posts that we've written, uh, have links built into them already. Um, yeah, copy paste, throw in a picture and you're good to go. It takes all the hard work out of planning your social for the day. Uh, and that's what we strive to do is make this as easy as possible for you. Uh, next slide, please. And here's just a, random smattering of some of the posts down there. Again, we, we've got over 200. This is just some of the stuff you'll find. Um, use them all, we've made them for you. Um, yeah, so thank you very much. I think that concludes my portion. Um, and yeah, Debbie, back to you.